Just recently, allegations of sex abuse have come to light at Penn State, Syracuse, the Citadel, and even in the clubhouse at Fenway Park. Well, now there are explosive new charges against the president of the Amateur Athletic Union. Two basketball players say they were sexually abused in the 1980s. So, is it a coincidence that all of these are being revealed now? And is sex abuse in sports more prevalent than in society as a whole? Joining us is Paul Monis, a criminal defense attorney who represents victims of sexual abuse. Last year, he won the largest verdict for sexual abuse against the Boy Scouts of America. Paul, thanks for being with us. Good morning, really Betty. Appreciate it. All right, so it seems like every day we're hearing about another case in the headlines. Why do you think we're hearing about so many now? I think we're hearing about it because people need permission to come out, and many people hide this for years and years because of shame and embarrassment. And in fact, most of the people will never come out. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if the allegations, for instance, against uh, any one of these people are proven true at any point, most people remain silent their whole lives and take it to their grave So you with think them. there are many more than oh, we're hearing Oh, many about. more. The statistics, especially with boys being molested by men, the statistics are very high for underreporting because there's so much shame and embarrassment because the people blame themselves. They don't blame the person mm -hmm. who has done it. Let's talk about those statistics sure. because uh, some say one in four girls yes. have been uh, sexually abused. Yes. and one in six boys. you think right. that's too low or too high? Well, the, the statistics are very hard to get specific on, but that's viewed as fairly reliable by a number of people that I work with uh, around the country who do research in the area. And, it's high, and it combines both intrafamilial, you know, fathers mm -hmm. and, and right. daughters, et cetera, or, et cetera, or in the area we know of institutional abuse, which is uh, church abuse, uh, the scouting program, or now what we're seeing really in, in sports. And sports is going to be the next large area where people feel permission to start coming out. Well, I want to ask you about the sure. sports world, because do mm -hmm. you think it's more prevalent in the sports world? than these other areas? Uh -huh. Well, I don't think it's more prevalent, but the problem in the sports world is many parents who are watching today or people who participate in sports as kids is that coaches have this isolated time with kids. It's one of the few areas where there is permissible mm -hmm. touching, you know, for instance, in teaching kids uh, basketball skills or <clears throat> football skills. So there's an area that they typically would not be able to do if they were just typical adults in a relationship with a child. So we're going to see a lot more of that. There's a lot of isolated one-on-one -on -one Time, which is very right. uh, dangerous. Well, that situations. being the case, what needs to be done to stop this? Well, I mean, that's a question everybody's going to yeah. try. That's the, that's the big question. I think the main thing is people have to be aware that people who do these things to children are everywhere, mm -hmm. and that it's not the guy outside in a raincoat waiting for kids to come out of school. And it's a lot of subtle cues you have to watch with your children in terms of being alone with adults who you don't know, even if they seem to be the best coach. Like when I have kids and I always was concerned, mm -hmm. who's the coach with my kid? I want to, you have to engage these adults. And the parents who do that, who engage the adults, who find out who's taking care of their kids during the day in sports, those parents will have their kids be safer. All right, we all need to keep that in mind. Thank sure. you so much, Paul Monis, joining us.